Jesus' love never lets you down. We may have wondered at times where Jesus was, but in the end, he never lets us down. And I'm a witness to that in 47 years of life. 20 years of priesthood. June the 4th, 1994, so. And uh, St. Bernardine's was a uh, part of my formation. I was, we were here, what, when I was in kindergarten? And uh, I do remember going to Sunday school in kindergarten, I do remember that. And then our car broke down, and so uh, we couldn't, uh, couldn't get here, so. But you were part uh, of that formation, even, even if it was way back in kindergarten for me, and, and then also for your support during the years when I was in seminary uh, and then at the ordination and afterwards and times that I've been here throughout the 20 years uh, here. So it's been a great privilege to be here at St. Bernardine's throughout 20 years and, and today. Now God's will is done and we certainly pray that uh, as you undergo a new chapter in your parish history uh, that you believe that the Lord will continue to bless you immensely. Uh, under the pastorate of uh, Monsignor Richard Bozzelli. I was ordained with him, so it's also his 20th anniversary this month. So we're gonna pray for him. And so I know he's looking forward to serving uh, the people of God here uh, and uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to add my own greetings in, on Father's Day, asking for God's blessings upon you who are fathers by uh, biologically, uh, spiritually, and by adoption, uh, that the Lord uh, blesses you immensely, uh, that you know that you are blessed beyond measure each and every day. But we want to recognize you in a special way this day, Father's Day. We also want to pray with hope in the gift of eternal life through Christ for our fathers who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. Certainly remember my own father, Raymond Lee Harris Sr., who entered into eternal life in 1984. Uh, we buried him from St. Edward's Church, uh, which was his home parish growing up. So, but as we commend uh, those fathers to the Lord, we thank God for the gift of eternal life, but also thank God for the time in which we spent with them here on earth. <clears throat> And the same can be said for those fathers here who uh, have commended their children to the Lord, children who have died, that the Lord heal you. And we want to pray for those fathers and children who have difficulties with one another, that God's healing power will bring them to wholeness. And we pray that as well on Father's Day. Now, we have uh, also prayed over these past six months in memory of the spiritual father you had here on earth, Monsignor Edward Miller. And, uh, and I also want to thank God for the past six months, the spiritual fatherhood of Deacon Paul Barksdale. <laughs> Through the Archbishop, God called him to leave this parish even though he was grieving too. And even as he ministered to you, he needed to be ministered to as well. And we thank you for the times in which you ministered to him and continue to pray for him uh, during these next couple weeks of transition. And uh, again, Deacon Paul, we will not all know the sacrifices you've made for this parish, but we do know without a doubt your great love for this parish. And we thank you very much for doing the will of the Lord. And now in the Universal Church, we celebrate the Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. So 
we want to look at the readings today, where the Trinity talks about how God is in himself, in himself, and how God is not solitary. Uh, that if God is love, and he is, uh, then his love reaches out. And so he, he couldn't be seen as someone who was just alone. Uh, but you could think about the Trinity as the Father being the lover and the Son being the beloved. And in the bond of life and love that they share, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so the celebration of the Most Holy Trinity is a celebration of the revelation of God to us. Now, in the Old Testament, or the people of the first covenant, uh, God revealed himself to be one. And the people of Israel said uh, each morning, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. But then Jesus reveals again the oneness of God uh, as he preaches, he said, in uh, that he is God's only son in the reading, gospel reading today, in that famous reading of uh, the third chapter of John, in which he said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Then he says later on in the gospel of John, before he is arrested, he says that I will be handed over uh, to others, I will be crucified, but on the third day I will rise from the dead, I will ascend into heaven, and then I will ask the Father to send you another comforter, one standing by your side. Uh, the Father will send the Holy Spirit to you in my name, Jesus said. And so we understand the one God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit based on the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that God is love. He's love even in the Old Testament. Uh, St. Bernardine's is known for his Bible studies and emphasis on knowing about the Word of God. And it's kind of troubling when some people tell me, not from St. Bernardine's, but in other places, the God of the, New of the Old Testament seems very different from the God of the New Testament, as if God had a mood swing in between the Testaments. But we heard in the Gospel reading in the New Testament, Jesus saying, God so loved the world. Right, so, and we can replace the world with our names. God so loves Raymond that he gave his only begotten son. You are so loved by God. Uh, God is saying, I can't uh, have you understand enough how much I love you. Right, so, but then we look in the Old Testament, for instance, in the first reading, in which Moses uh, is talking with the Lord and uh, the Lord came down into a cloud and stood with Moses there, proclaimed his name, Lord. He says, I'm merciful and gracious. I'm slow to anger. I'm rich in kindness and fidelity. So, so the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament, the same God. Didn't have any mood swings. Uh, he was very stable in his love for us. His love is offered to us without condition. He never takes it away from us. And he invites us to believe in that. That's why Jesus came into the world. As the choir sang, Jesus is love. He, we saw the love of God manifested, made present in the flesh through Jesus Christ. We see in Jesus, this is how God the Father acts in relationship with humanity. This is, and Jesus shows us how we are to relate uh, to God and to one another. But even as we say how we relate to God the Father, let us be clear that we're not separating how God the Father acts from how God the Son acts and how God the Holy Spirit acts. We don't want to just isolate uh, the Father to creation or the Son to redemption or the Holy Spirit to sanctification. Uh, in creation, God the Father created the world through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. We read that in the letter to the Colossians. In redemption, the Lord Jesus Christ has come to take away our sins, to teach us how to live in union with our God and with right relationships with others. He was sent by God the Father and anointed by the Holy Spirit. So the Trinity is involved in creation and also in redemption, but also in sanctification, that is being made holy. To be holy means I belong to God, I'm aware of that, I'm not ashamed of it. I know that Jesus is, what is that? Jesus is alive, available, <laughs> and able, right? 
and I know those things, and I'm not ashamed of it, and I'm going to live like that. So the Holy Spirit helps us to do that, and the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father, and the Spirit of the Son, and the bond of life and love that they have uh, with each other. And we know that bond can never be broken, and we're caught up in that love. And that love is poured into us. Uh, and so the, Holy, the Trinity is involved in all of the ways that God continues to act in our lives. Now, a person reveals himself or herself to us, and it establishes some type of relationship. Sometimes it can create a bad relationship, but, uh, but uh, other times it creates a good relationship. Uh, that you reach a point in your interactions with one another that you reveal who you are and, uh, and you are accepted, your strengths and your weaknesses, and it fosters strong relationships with each other. And so when God reveals himself to us, helps us to deepen our understanding of who he is, he's saying, I want to be in relationship with you. Here is God who does not need anyone to say that he is God. He doesn't have to submit to a vote to say whether he's God or not. Here is God who created everything. He didn't have to create everything to say, look, I created that, I must be God. Boy, I feel good about myself here. He doesn't need anyone or anything to affirm that he is God, but God desires to be in relationship with us. And even when we broke the bond of relationship with God, by not trusting in his direction for our lives, God continued to make a decision to love us, to continue to reach out to us and to say, I'm here if you want to have a relationship with me. When we've turned our back to God, God hasn't turned our backs on us. So that when we respond to his call to turn around, we find that he's always been there waiting for us to come back home. We see that again in the Gospel reading. Uh, God so loved the world. Now on one side we can say the world and, uh, and ourselves, but the, the evangelists also use the term the world as those who were set in opposition to God. So Jesus was saying, even though these people are set in opposition to me, God so loves them. Same thing we heard in the first reading. God said that I'm merciful, I'm gracious, I'm uh, slow to anger, I'm rich in kindness and fidelity, even though I'm dealing with a stiff-necked people. But I'm going to pardon their wickedness and sins, and I'm going to receive them as my own. So when God reveals who he is, he's saying, I want to be in relationship with you. So when we talk about the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, it's not enough to say I got the doctrine right. Uh, the thing is, well, we, could, we could say I got the doctrine in my head, but the thing is, God wants to be in a vital relationship with him. He wants us to wake up each new, uh, we could wake up every day and to say, God is blessing me, I belong to him, I'm going to rejoice in that. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will choose to rejoice and be glad in it regardless of what will be happening that day, regardless of what happened yesterday. So he reveals himself to us because he wants to relate to us. But not only that, the relationship we have with our God is not in isolation. But that love spills out to others. So we see some practical ways about that in the second reading today. St. Paul says to the church in Corinth, if you're going to give witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ, which includes his revelation of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, then make sure you're getting it right within the community. Mend your ways. For how can you call others to repentance if you're not undergoing repentance yourself? Encourage one another in the church. And some, you know, not here at St. Bernardine's or at St. Agnes or St. William of York. Not, not there, but, but some parishes need to say that a couple times. Encourage one another. Uh, the, uh, how are you going to encourage people outside of the church if you can't start with the people 
inside of the church. Foster unity in the church. Okay, foster unity in the church. <laughs> Meaning agree with one another. So it means to come to a consensus there and to promote what is for the unity of the church. Uh, live in peace. Don't come in to cause discord. Not only in church, but also at home. <laughs> live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. You want to give glory and praise to God forever? We certainly want to do that here in church, particularly during worship, with the extending of our hands, the lifting up of our voices, our, our whole entire being offered up in worship. But we also give glory, to God, glory and praise to God forever when we mend our ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and greet one another affectionately in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so let us pray today that as we celebrate our God, he wants to be in relationship with us. You should never, ever forget that. I have been surprised and amazed in 20 years of priesthood how some people thought that God could never love them. And I would say that's not the gospel and that's not what God has revealed. God says the gift is available for you. If I give you the gift, you have to receive it. <laughs> and so we want to pray that we continue to receive that gift, to thank God for it, to show it in how we live our lives. That's how we demonstrate the revelation of God to us. That's how we demonstrate that we are in relationship with God. It's by how we live according to it. God help us never to be ashamed to live according to who we are and to whose we are. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.